Hey there hikers, Adam here. So have you ever asked yourself where should I go hiking? Well this is a comprehensive guide to all the hiking challenges and lists as well as backpacking trails in the northeast to get you started. Now before we get too carried away, let's go over some basic info about the Northeast region of the United States. For any references I make to New England, I'll be referring to the states of Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. And then when I reference the Northeast, this will encompass New England, plus the states of New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And if you have any issue with those definitions, feel free to complain in those comments down below. I look forward to seeing them. All right, this region has four main mountain ranges and two minor ones. Okay, wait, maybe three minor ones. There are the White Mountains in New Hampshire, the Green Mountains in Vermont, and then New York has two, both the Adirondacks and the Catskills. For the minor ranges, Massachusetts has the Berkshires, and then there's the Taconic Mountain Range that goes along the New York and Massachusetts border and down into Connecticut. Ooh, geez, and I almost forgot that Pennsylvania has the Poconos. These are where all of our hiking lists slash challenges will take place. Starting in New Hampshire, I found 15 different hiking lists that are considered significant or offer patches for completion. The most famous and prominent hiking list in the state is of course the New Hampshire 48 4,000 footers. This list includes 48 mountains that are at least 4,000 feet tall and have a prominence of at least 200 feet in New Hampshire's White Mountains. The list was one of the earliest hiking lists ever created in the region brought into existence by the Apple Mountain Club in 1957. Since that time, over 15,000 people have registered a completion of the New Hampshire 48 list. Oh, and don't forget, there is both a winter patch and a four season patch available as well. The next list is an offshoot of the New Hampshire 48 called The Grid. This monster of a challenge requires a hiker to hike each New Hampshire 4,000 footer in each calendar month of the year. So that means each of the 48 mountains would require 12 ascents for a total of 576 ascents to complete the grid. And reflecting that craziness, less than 150 people have currently registered completion of this challenge. Next up is the 52 with a view. This hiking list includes 52 mountains less than 4,000 feet with incredible views. Next, we have the terrifying 25. Created by Trish, Alex, and Sage Hare, the list specifically focuses on white mountain hiking trails that have slides, rock scrambles, boulder caves, or even rickety ladders. The list includes 20 required trails and then five elective trails from a greater list of 14 trails for a total of 34 possible hikes. The next five lists are all related to each other and the first is the New Hampshire 100 highest, which technically does not have a patch associated with it. These are the 100 highest mountains in the state of New Hampshire. Second is the New Hampshire 200 highest. This is the first list with a patch associated with it. And these are the 203 mountains higher than two 2,900 feet in the state. Third, we're moving on to the New Hampshire 300 highest, and these are the 307 mountains higher than 2,400 feet in the state. Fourth is the New Hampshire 2,000 footers. These are the 473 peaks in New Hampshire that are taller than 2,000 feet. Fifth and craziest is the New Hampshire 500 highest, and these are technically the 501 highest mountains in the state due to one three-way tie for last place. Less than 50 people total have registered completion of the New Hampshire 200 highest and then that list dwindles to less than 20 people for the New Hampshire 500 highest. Next is White Mountain Trail Tracing. The objective of this challenge is to hike every trail included in the official AMC White Mountain Guide. All 600 freaking pages and 1400 freaking miles of trails. Though many would-be challengers end up hiking so many more miles backtracking to reach the more obscure trails. Now less than 100 people have registered completion of this crazy challenge. Next we have the Trail Ride 72 Club. This list requires hikers to complete 72 individual hikes to the 72 mountains on the official list and then to complete 72 hours of documented trail work. Next up is the Belknap Range Hiking Program. This list includes the 12 mountains in the Belknap Range, all of which are less than 2,500 feet of 
elevation. Next is the Ossipee 10. This list requires a hiker to tackle 10 peaks within the Ossipee Mountains near Lake Winnipesaukee. Next is the Castle in the Clouds patch. This list requires a hiker to visit all five summits and then hike all 19 designated trails in the Castle in the Clouds conservation area. Next is the New Hampshire Fire Lookout Tower Quest. This list requires you to hike and visit five of the 15 active fire towers operating in New Hampshire. Last is the absolute pinnacle of New Hampshire peak bagging glory, the New Hampshire Triple Crown. This mega hiking challenge of challenges requires a hiker to complete three of the craziest New Hampshire hiking challenges. They have to complete the grid. No, God! The White Mountain Trail Tracing. No, God, please, no! And the New Hampshire 500 highest altogether. No! 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 And currently only five people have ever achieved this monumental feat. And then for backpacking, I found eight different trails to explore in New Hampshire. First up is the shortest backpacking trail with the Wapak Trail, one of the oldest hiking trails opened in 1923. The trail is 21 miles long and follows the Wapak range from Mount Watatic in Massachusetts to North Pack Monadnock in New Hampshire. Next is the Presidential Traverse. The trail is 21 miles long and crosses over the Presidential Range from Mount Madison to Mount Pierce. This is one of the most strenuous and dangerous treks in New Hampshire and is recommended recommended for experienced hikers. This trail is also a popular ultra hiking route when completed in a single day. Next up is the Pemijawasset or Pemi Loop. The trail is a 34 mile long loop around the western portion of the Pemijawasset wilderness. The route includes Franconia Ridge and several prominent New Hampshire 4000 footers. Next is the White Mountain Hut Traverse. The trail is 45 miles long and connects the eight huts operated by the Appalachian Mountain Club between Carter and and Lonesome Lake Hut. This trail is a popular ultra hiking route when completed in a single day. Next is the Monadnock Sunapee Greenway. The trail is 50 miles long and crosses the highlands of southern New Hampshire from Mount Monadnock to Mount Sunapee. Next is the Cross New Hampshire Adventure Trail. The trail is 83 miles long and is also a popular bike trail from Woodsville, New Hampshire to Bethel, Maine. Next is the Coas Trail. The trail is 170 miles long connecting the northern and southern southern ends of Coas County, New Hampshire, from Notchland to the Canadian border near the Connecticut Lakes. Lastly is the longest trail with the White Mountains Deratissima. And Deratissima is an Italian word that roughly translates to the most direct route. Thus, the White Mountains Deratissima is the trail that would connect all 48 of New Hampshire's 4,000 footer mountains into one continuous route. There technically is no set trail for this route as long as all 48 mountains are reached in one continuous hike. However, the route that I'm depicting here is the fastest known time unsupported world record route set by Will Peterson on July 29th, 2020. He completed this 220 mile route in five days, 13 hours and five minutes. Moving over to Vermont, I found two hiking lists to explore. First up, we have the Northeast Kingdom Mountain Challenge. This list includes 20 mountains with the most publicly accessible trails within the Northeast Kingdom region of Vermont. Next is the Vermont 110. This list includes all 110 mountains in Vermont that are taller than 3,000 feet in elevation. Due to the many bushwhacks required, I'd only recommend this list to experienced hikers and those crazy completionists. Vermont, however, is much more famous for its one significant backpacking trail. This preeminent trail is, of course, the Long Trail, which is currently the oldest long-distance trail in the U.S. It was constructed between 1910 and 1930. Some even say that it inspired the creation of the Appalachian Trail, which actually overlaps with the Long Trail for around 100 miles. The Long Trail itself is 273 miles long and runs the main ridgeline of the Green Mountains across the entire state of Vermont from Massachusetts to the Canadian border. The hikers that complete this trail earn the designation of being a Long Trail end-to-ender. But if that is not enough, there is an additional 
additional challenge to hike all 166 miles of the Long Trail's Blue Blazed Side Trails. Over in Maine, I found seven different hiking lists to complete. First and most prominent are the Maine 4,000 footers. This list includes the 14 mountains in Maine higher than 4,000 feet and follow the usual 200 foot prominence rule. There is also a winter patch available as well. Next is the Maine 3,500 footers. This list includes the 64 mountains in the state that are higher than 3,500 feet and follow the usual 200 foot prominence rule. There is also a winter patch available as well. Next is the Moosehead Pinnacle Pursuit. This list includes six mountains that offer amazing panoramic views of the Moosehead Lake region. Of note, there is an ultra patch available for hikers that complete the entire challenge in less than 48 hours. And then on top of that, there are also winter patches for both the standard and ultra challenges. Next, we have the delightfully named Wicked Wild 25. Similar to New Hampshire's Terrifying 25, this list features the more extreme trails throughout Maine. And those trails could feature ladders, cliffs, slides, and of course, iron rungs. There are currently 32 potential trails to choose from for this list, but a hiker only needs to conquer 25 of the trails for completion. Next are the Acadia Ascents. This list requires a hiker to tackle each of the 26 original peaks within Acadia National Park. Next is the Maine Triple Twinter Challenge. <laughs> Gosh, that's funny to say. The challenge requires hikers to summit three pairs of twin 4,000 footer summits in a single winter season. Bonus points if you hike both twin summits on the same day. Last is the Royal River Conservation Trust 400 Footer Club. This list highlights 10 spots in the Royal River watershed all around 400 feet. This would be an ideal list for beginner hikers and families with smaller children. I mean, come on, we gotta get them started early somehow, don't we? For backpacking, there are two significant trails to tackle in Maine. First up is the shortest trail with the Grafton Loop trail. The trail is a 38 mile long loop around some fairly remote and rugged terrain in western Maine. Lastly is the longest trail with the Down East Sunrise Trail. The trail is 88 miles long and is a multi-use rail trail that runs along the Maine coast from Ellsworth to Ayers. Now in Massachusetts I found two hiking challenges worth tackling. First is the daunting Blue Hills 125 mile club. This challenge requires hikers to complete every single trail officially listed within the Blue Hills Reservation. All 125 total miles of trails must be completed, though you are allowed to hike, bike, or run the trails if applicable. There is also an additional Blue Hills Skyliner patch available for hikers that complete the full Skyline trail end to end. Last is the Hike Worcester Challenge. This challenge requires hikers to complete 10 out of 18 potential hikes throughout the green spaces managed by the Greater Worcester Land Trust. Switching over to backpacking, Massachusetts Massachusetts has four possible trails to explore. First is the shortest trail with the Taconic Crest Trail. The trail is 36 miles long and follows the Taconic Ridge Line from Massachusetts into New York and then Vermont. Next is the Mid-State Trail. The trail is 92 miles long, fully crossing Massachusetts from Rhode Island to New Hampshire. The trail summits both Mount Wachusett and Mount Watatic and is only 45 miles west of Boston in central Massachusetts. Next is the Metacomet Monadnock. Trail or the M&M Trail. The trail is 114 miles long and follows the Metacomet Ridge across Massachusetts through the Pioneer Valley region up to Mount Monadnock in New Hampshire. Lastly is the longest trail with the Bay Circuit Trail. The trail is around 230 miles long encircling Boston from Duxbury up to Plum Island. Moving down to Connecticut, I found one significant hiking challenge to complete, and this is the Blue Blazed Hiking Challenge. The goal of the challenge is to basically hike as many miles of trails in the Blue Blaze hiking trail system as you can, without repeating miles and of course only counting your one-way mileage. And this list may just have the swankiest rewards that I've ever heard of. For completing 50 miles, it's the standard patch, but for 200 miles, it's a stainless steel water bottle. For 400 miles, a fleece beanie. And for hiking 800 freaking miles, it's a fleece vest. And then for backpacking, I was 
was utterly shocked to learn that Connecticut has eight freaking trails to explore. How is it even possible? First is the shortest trail with the Monunkatunk Trail. The trail is 17 miles long, starting at the Atlantic Ocean and is part of the Greater New England National Scenic Trail. Next is the Quinnipiac Trail. Created in 1932, the trail is the oldest trail in the Connecticut Blue Blazed Hiking Trail System. The trail is 21 miles long and includes Sleeping Giant State Park. Next is the Nipmuc Trail. The trail is 37 miles long and traverses through the forests of Northeast Connecticut to the Massachusetts border. Next is the Tunxis Trail. The trail is 41 miles long and traverses the western ridge of the central Connecticut Valley. The Tunxis Trail connects to the Greater Tunxis Trail System with over 83 miles of interconnected trails. Next is the Mattatuck Trail. The trail is 42 miles long and winds its way through western Connecticut in two separate sections. Next is the Shinepsit Trail. The trail is 51 miles long and is located in central Connecticut just east of Hartford. Next is the Metacomet Trail. The trail is 63 miles long following the Metacomet Ridge in central Connecticut and is part of the Greater New England National Scenic Trail. Lastly is the longest trail with the Mattabesset Trail. The trail is 65 miles long and goes near several scenic cliffs in central Connecticut and is part of the Greater New England National Scenic Trail. While Rhode Island obviously has no hiking lists or challenges, it does have a single significant backpacking trail. And this would be the aptly named North-South Trail. The trail is 76 miles long and stretches across the entire state of Rhode Island from the Atlantic Ocean to the Massachusetts border. Now when we pull back to New England as a whole, there are six different hiking lists and challenges to tackle. The first and most prominent hiking list in the region is the New England 67 4,000 footers. This list includes the 67 mountains that are at least 4,000 feet tall and with 200 feet of prominence in the New England region. New Hampshire claims 48 peaks on the list, Maine holds 14 peaks, and the remaining five peaks are located in Vermont. For the truly crazy hikers though, both a grid patch as well as a winter patch are available for this list. Next is the New England 100 highest. This list includes the 100 highest mountains in the New England region. New Hampshire boasts 59 peaks on the list, while Maine claims 27 peaks, and the remaining 14 peaks are located in Vermont. Of course, for the crazy hardcore hikers, both a grid patch as well as a winter patch are available for this list. Next is the New England 50 finest. Now this list is rather unique compared to the others we've been looking at today, with very few mountains overlapping with the other lists. This list includes 50 summits in New England with the highest topographic prominence. This is a peak's height above the lowest elevation contour that encloses that peak and no higher peak. Basically, that means that these mountains are typically the tallest mountains in their surrounding landscapes. Maine holds 20 peaks on this list, Vermont claims 15 peaks, New Hampshire only holds 14 peaks, and the remaining peak is actually located in Massachusetts. Next is the New England 3000 footers. This list includes the 453 mountains in New England that are at least 3000 feet tall. New Hampshire accounts for 175 peaks, Maine holds 166 peaks, Vermont claims 110 peaks and the remaining two peaks are in Massachusetts. Less than 50 people have ever registered completion of this hiking list. Next is the Go North Niner. This list includes nine mountains located in the Great North Woods across both Vermont and New Hampshire. Lastly, we have the New England Six Pack of Peaks Challenge. This list requires hikers to summit six iconic New England mountains from a list of 11 mountains to choose from. For backpacking, the New England region currently has one of official trail and one unofficial trail. Currently, the one officially designated trail is the New England Trail. The trail is 215 miles long and follows the Metacomet Ridge through central Connecticut and Massachusetts to the New Hampshire border. Unofficially, another long backpacking trail can be created by combining Rhode Island's North-South Trail, Massachusetts's Mid-State Trail, and New Hampshire's Wapak Trail. This combined trail would be 190 miles long, extending from the Atlantic Ocean to North Pakman Nadnock in New Hampshire. Finally, we're escaping New England and heading over to New York. And I hope that you're strapped in because I found an almost unfathomable 26, yes, that's right, 26 hiking challenges to complete. Is there really that little to do in upstate New York? Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should.
The most famous and prominent hiking list in New York is obviously the Adirondack 46ers. This list includes the 46 mountains in the Adirondacks that are at least 4,000 feet tall or are traditionally included. This list is one of the oldest U.S. peak bagging lists created, first described by the Marshalls in 1922. And since that time, almost 14,000 people have conquered the challenge. And of course, there is a winter patch available if you need a tougher challenge. Next is the Adirondack 29er. This list includes 29 main mountains and 11 alternate mountains outside of the high peaks region with spectacular views. Additionally, all hikes are less than 9 miles total and could be completed as a day trip. The next list is the directly related Junior Adirondack 29er. This list includes 29 main mountains and 11 alternate mountains outside of the high peaks region that are great for younger hikers or those looking for easier trails. Additionally, all the hikes are less than 5 miles round trip and have less than 1,500 feet of elevation gain. For the hikers that truly love the cold and a tougher challenge, winter patches are available for both the 29er and Junior 29er challenges. Next is the Adirondack Blue Challenge. This list includes 10 family and dog friendly hikes. Of note, there are specific unique patches available for dogs and an ultra patch for hikers who complete the challenge in less than 48 hours. But for hikers itching for an even harder challenge, the standard and ultra challenges have winter patches available as well. Next is the Adirondack 9 Challenge. This includes 9 dog friendly hikes with rewarding views. For those wondering, yes, the dog earns their own special patch. Next is the Adirondack 50 Falls Challenge. This list requires hikers to visit 50 waterfalls out of a list of 64 possible Adirondack waterfalls. An easier green patch variation exists if the hiker includes 5 specifically designated waterfalls in their 50 and a special red extreme patch is awarded for including including the 11 tougher waterfalls in your 50. A related challenge is the Hamilton County Waterfall Challenge. This list requires hikers to visit several waterfalls throughout Hamilton County to earn 12 points. Next is the Adirondack Fire Tower Challenge. This list requires hikers to visit 18 out of 23 summits with fire towers in the Adirondacks and all five fire towers in the Catskills. Completing this challenge also overlaps with both the Hamilton County Fire Tower and Catskill Fire Tower Challenge patches as well. But for the truly dedicated, a winter patch is also available. Next is the Adirondack Snow Falls Challenge. This challenge requires hikers to visit your choice of 10 roadside falls, 5 modest hikes, and 1 challenging hike to waterfalls all in the winter months. Next is the Adirondack Lakes and Ponds Challenge. This list includes 25 lakes and ponds throughout the Adirondacks that offer scenic lakeshore views. Next is the Adirondack Six Pack of Peaks Challenge. This list includes six iconic mountains throughout Adirondack State Park. Next is the Lake George 12-ster. This list includes 12 mountains located around Lake George in the southern Adirondacks. But don't forget, this list easily ups the difficulty by offering an ultra patch for completing the 12 peaks in less than 24 hours. And then there are also winter patches available for both the standard and ultra challenges. Next is the Fulton Chain Trifecta. This list includes three mountains in the Adirondacks located around Old Forge. For an extra challenge, a winter patch is available as well. Next is the Tupper Lake Triad. This list includes three mountains that are family friendly, all located around Tupper Lake. Additionally, a winter patch is also available. Next is the Saranac Lake Sixer. This list includes six mountains in the Adirondacks located near Saranac Lake. For the hardcore hikers, an ultra patch is available for tackling all six mountains in a single day. Additionally, winter patches are available for both the standard and ultra challenges as well. Next is the Lake Placid Niner. This list includes nine mountains less than 4,000 feet located around Lake Placid, New York. But for an even greater challenge, an ultra patch is available for completing the nine peaks in one day. Additionally, winter patches are also available for both the standard and ultra challenges. The next challenge is directly related to the previous three and is called the Tri Lakes Trifecta. The challenge requires a hiker to have completed the Tupper Lake Tri Triad, Saranac Lake Sixer, and the Lake Placid Niner, all 18 peaks total. As expected, there is also a winter patch available for the challenge. Next is the Chester Challenge. This list requires hikers to complete six hiking trails in and around the town of Chester, New York. Additionally, a winter patch is also available. Next is the Lewis County 33 Hiking Challenge. The challenge requires hikers to hike 33 miles of approved trails throughout Lewis County. Next is the Great Eight Challenge. 
This challenge is made up of three separate challenges to hike eight eligible trails throughout St. Lawrence County. The Riverside Run version focuses on hikes near the five major rivers in the county. The Nature Nuts version focuses on eight nature-filled hikes with wildlife lookouts and boardwalks. And the Waterfall Crawl version focuses on hikes to stunning waterfalls. We're finally now escaping the Adirondacks and moving down to the Catskills with the Catskill 3500 Club. This list includes the 33 mountains in the Catskills that are higher than 3,500 feet in elevation. What is truly shocking though is that there are a staggering eight challenge and patch variations available for the 3500 Club. First and most obviously there is a winter patch available. The next level of challenge is the four season challenge which is to hike all 33 3500 footers in each season. There are additionally patches for crazy hikers that complete all 33 mountains in a single season and one is available for each of the four seasons. If you're even more ambitious, a crazy combo patch is awarded if you combine your four single season hikes into one continuous year. Lastly, the most ambitious challenge variant offered is a Catskill Mountain Grid patch. Next is the Catskills All Trails Challenge. This challenge requires hikers to complete every single trail available in the Catskill Park, totaling over 350 miles. Next is the Scary 19 P. This list includes 19 mountains located in Schoharie County that have interesting views, features, or history. Additionally, for those wanting a greater challenge, a winter patch is also available. Next is the Finger Lakes Region Waterfall Challenge. This list requires hikers to visit 35 waterfalls located throughout the Finger Lakes and listed in the Waterfall Challenge Guidebook. Lastly are the Outside Chronicles Hiking Challenges. These challenges have requirements and trails that change from year to year, but typically focus on hikes throughout Western New York and the Finger Lakes region of upstate New York. The current Western New York and Finger Lakes winter hiking challenges require hikers to complete eight hikes out of a list of potential hikes. New York also isn't lacking in the backpacking department as I found seven possible trails to explore. First is the shortest trail with the Cranberry 50. This trail is a 50 mile long loop that fully encircles Cranberry Lake in the Adirondacks. Next is the Schwangunk Ridge Trail. The trail is 71 miles long and follows the dramatic Schwangunk Ridge from High Point, New Jersey to Mohawk Preserve. Next is the Northville Placid Trail. The trail is 138 miles long and runs through the heart of the Adirondacks from the village of Northville to Lake Placid. It is one of the oldest backpacking trails and was completed in 1924. Next is the Trans Adirondack Route. The trail is 236 miles long and extends across the entirety of New York's Adirondack Adirondack State Park, which is the largest state park in the lower 48. The route has been known to be wilder, more remote, and less popular compared to similar backpacking trails in the area. Next is the Long Path. The trail is 424 miles long and connects New York City up through the Catskills all the way to Adirondack State Park. Next is the Finger Lakes Trail. The trail is 580 miles long and connects Allegheny State Park all the way to the Long Path in the Catskills. A significant portion of the trail is part of the Greater North Country National Scenic Trail, and patches are awarded for those who complete the trail end to end. Additionally, there are six significant branch trails that can also be completed for a branch trail end to end patch. The first branch trail is the 115 mile long Conservation Trail. Second is the 25 mile long Letchworth Trail. Third is the 52 mile long Bristol Hills Trail. Fourth is the 47 mile long Crystal Hills Trail. Fifth is the 11 mile long Interlochen Trail. And lastly is the 38 mile long Onondaga Trail for a total of 288 additional miles. Last is the longest trail with the Empire State Trail. The trail is 750 miles long and combines both an east-west trail along the Erie Canal from Buffalo to Albany and a north-south trail from New York City up to the Canadian border. This trail can also be used for bike riding in many sections. Now, New Jersey having no real mountain ranges has no hiking list to speak of, but it does have three backpacking trails to complete. First up is the shortest trail with the Batona Trail. The trail is 53 miles long and winds its way through the New Jersey Pine Barrens or Pine Lands. There are even a few ghost towns to discover along the trail deep amongst the pines. Next is the D&R Canal Trail. The the trail is 70 miles long, following along the scenic Delaware and Raritan Canal as well as the Delaware River. The trail is also a popular trail for biking. Lastly is the Long
longest trail with the Liberty Water Gap Trail. The trail is 146 miles long and traverses the entire state of New Jersey from Liberty State Park to the Delaware Water Gap. Surprisingly, with all that land, Pennsylvania doesn't have any hiking lists that I found, not even in the Poconos. It does, however, have 18. That's right, a staggering 18 freaking backpacking trails to tackle. You think we need one more? You think we need one more? All right, we'll get one more. First is the shortest trail with the West Rim Trail. The trail is 30 miles long and follows the western edge of Pine Creek Gorge, also known as Pennsylvania's Grand Canyon. Next is the Bucktail Path. The trail is 34 miles long and has been described as one of the most isolated and least hiked trails in Pennsylvania. Next is the Allegheny Front Trail. The trail is a 42 mile long looped around Black Moshannon State Park. Next is the Black Forest Trail. The trail is a 43 mile long loop near the Pine Creek Gorge and several expansive vistas. Many hikers describe the trail as the most scenic and challenging in Pennsylvania. Next is the Chuck Kuiper Trail. The trail is a 54 mile long loop around the most remote areas of the Sprout State Forest. Next is the Loyal Sock Trail. The trail is 59 miles long running roughly parallel to the Loyal Sock Creek through the rugged terrain of Loyal Sock State Forest. Next is the Conestoga Trail System. The trail is 66 miles long and mostly follows roads to showcase the rural scenery of Lancaster County, including several covered bridges and Amish farms. Next is the Laurel Highlands Trail. The trail is 70 miles long and largely follows Laurel Hill and several state parks. Next is the Quihana Trail. The trail is a 73 mile long loop past numerous vistas and a variety of landscapes in the Quihana Wild Area. Next is the Susquehannock Trail System. The trail is an 84 mile long loop through two state parks and the Hammersley Wild Area. Next is the Standing Stone Trail. The trail is 84 miles long and runs along many rocky ridge tops and was created to connect the Tuscarora Trail to the Mid-State Trail. Next is the Tuscarora Trail. The trail is 252 miles long, but only 90 of those miles are in Pennsylvania, with the rest of those miles being located in Virginia, West Virginia, and Maryland. What's interesting is that this trail was originally created as an alternate route for the Appalachian Trail in the 1960s. Today, some people have been known to combine both the Tuscarora Trail and the Appalachian Trail into one 435 mile long loop, affectionately known as the Tuscalation Loop. Next is the Donut Hole Trail. The trail is 91 miles long and travels through the Sprout State Forest, encountering only six road crossings along the way. Next is the Baker Trail. The trail is 134 miles long long stretching from the Allegheny River up to near the border of Allegheny National Forest. Next is the Horseshoe Trail. The trail is 140 miles long, stretching from Valley Forge National Park up to the Appalachian Trail near Harrisburg. As the name implies, this trail is also popularly used for horseback riding. Next is the Great Allegheny Passage. The trail is 150 miles long from Cumberland, Maryland to downtown Pittsburgh and is also a popular biking trail. Next is the Mason-Dixon Trail. The trail is 193 miles long, stretching from the Appalachian Trail down into Maryland and Delaware before returning to Pennsylvania to end at Chad's Ford. Last is the longest trail with the Mid-State Trail. The trail is 327 miles long, stretching all the way across the entire state from Maryland to New York, and is currently slated to become part of the new Great Eastern Trail. And finally, pulling back to the entire Northeast as a whole, we have have five significant hiking challenges and lists. The first and most prominent list is the Northeast 111 Club. This list includes 115 mountains. Wait, what? D did I get that right? The challenge title in the patch, they, they list 111 mountains. Let me check my notes here. Oh, so I guess four mountains were added after the fact when elevation measurement improved but the club refuses to update their number base title or patches to reflect this new reality? And don't you get me started on the fact that they didn't remove some mountains that they found out were actually less than 4,000 feet and would actually bring the list back down to 111, but they still include 115. Oh, okay. 
For the truly crazy hikers though, both a grid patch as well as a winter patch are available for this list. The next list is the 4K Everyday Hiking Challenge. This challenge requires hikers to hike at least one Northeast 4,000 footer each calendar day, including February 29th. Can't be forgetting about those leap years now. Now the list of qualifying mountains for this challenge are the same 115 mountains that were included in the Northeast 111 Club. Though you could technically complete this list by hiking the same single mountain for all your 366 hikes. Less than 50 people have registered completion of this monumental challenge. Next is one of the toughest hiking challenges in the region, the Northeast Ultra 8. This list requires hikers to complete eight of the Northeast's toughest trails in less than 24 hours each. The first trail to tackle is the Mahusik Traverse. This trail is 26 miles long and crosses the New Hampshire main border over the Mahusik Range, including the infamous Notch. Next is the Cranberry 50. This trail is a 50 mile long loop that fully encircles Cranberry Lake in the Adirondacks. Next is the Pemi Loop. This trail is a 34 mile long loop around the western portion of the Pemigewasset Wilderness, including Franconia Ridge. Next is the Taconic Crest Traverse. This trail is 36 miles long and follows the Taconic Ridge Line through Massachusetts, New York, and Vermont. Next is the Saranac 6. This is a combination of trails to six different summits near Saranac Lake in the Adirondacks. The total trail mileage is around 31 miles for this collection of peaks. Next is the Presidential Traverse. This trail is 21 miles long and crosses over the Presidential Range, including Mount Washington, the tallest mountain in the north east. Next is the Great Range Traverse. This trail is 22 miles long and includes summiting Mount Marcy, the tallest mountain in New York and the Adirondacks, as well as seven other New York 4,000 footers. Lastly is the Devil's Path. This trail is 22 miles long and includes several significant and difficult summits in New York's Catskill Mountains. Don't forget, there is also a special gold patch available for hikers who complete this list a second time but in the winter months. Currently, less than 100 people have completed the main ultra challenge and less than 10 people have earned the golden winter patch. Next is the Sunrise and Sunset 10 Hiking Challenge. This list requires a hiker to summit the 10 designated peaks across New York and Vermont either all at sunrise or all at sunset. Lastly is the Northeast 773,000 footers. This highly secretive list includes all the mountains in the Northeast states that are higher than 3,000 feet. The peak breakdowns are as follows. Ooh, a fresh pie. Save me a slice. That's good. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's... All right, that's good. Okay, okay. All right, okay, all right. Okay, that's good. That's good. It's, it's enough slices. As I stated, this list is actually so hard to find. My visuals are my best estimation of the peaks included. Reflecting that reality and the absolute craziness of this challenge, less than 15 people have officially completed this list. Now for the backpackers, there are portions of four gigantic and famous hiking trails that all partially cross into the Northeast. First is the newest and shortest trail with the Great Eastern Trail. This trail is still partially under construction and will extend 1,800 miles up the east coast across nine states from Alabama to New York. Currently around 374 miles of the Great Eastern Trail are found in the Northeast. Due to how new this trail is, the number of people who have through hiked the entire trail is only a handful and it is significantly less popular than those other backpacking trails. Next is the East Coast Greenway. This trail extends around 3,000 miles up the East Coast across 15 states from Florida to Maine and is primarily composed of interconnected rail trails. Currently around 1,300 miles of the East Coast Greenway are found in the Northeast and the trail is also popular for biking. Next is the North Country Trail. This absolute monster of a trail extends around 4,800 miles across eight states from North Dakota to Vermont. Currently around 1,000 miles of the North Country Trail are found in the Northeast. Lastly is the most famous and significant trail with the Appalachian Trail. The trail extends around 2,200 miles across 14 states from Georgia. 
Georgia to Maine. Currently, around 1,000 miles of the trail are found in the Northeast, including parts of the famed Long Trail in Vermont and the 100-mile wilderness in Maine. This trail is obviously the most popular of the gigantic backpacking trails we've talked about, with around 800 completions a year. Additionally, the Appalachian Trail is part of the Triple Crown of hiking in the United States, along with the Continental Divide Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail. For those interested in starting any of these challenges, I've included links to all of them in the description down below. Whoa, we are finally done. <sighs> Man, I am freaking out of breath just talking about all of those challenges and hikes. Which one was your favorite? Personally, I'm the most interested in checking out the Wicked Wild 25 in Maine this coming summer. But hey, that's just my opinion. Now go get hiking.